Hello, this is Doctress Newtopia, and this is Lovolution Village. And Lovolution Village is it's the evolved state of revolution. It is given women the power of the womb to birth a new society. And the society is way beyond the American dream because this is a global, transnational dream that allows us to create a global planetary system, just like the planet revolves around the sun. That's what our new system will do. It will revolve around the sun so that we can use renewable energies, we can clean up the mess that we have created and start a new form of governance structure, a global system that is based on human rights. And this has been the dream of so many great thinkers throughout time, creating a planetary utopian system where everyone's needs are met. There is no one who falls out of a social safety net. So think global and we have to act local. That's just common sense. And think in terms of changing archetypal patterns. And as a woman, thinking on a global level is changing the paradigm of where women belong because we belong on the world stage. So I'm going to start a slideshow right now. And this is an image that I got off of Flickr. Thank you so much, Flickr photographers, for being on Wall Street and capturing some of these images of what is going on there. All week, I've been getting up at like at 4 o'clock a.m. Just can't sleep because I am so excited with the possibility of this revolutionary consciousness emerging. We saw it in the Arab Spring, and we are seeing it now in the United States. Now, for the last week, people have been occupying outside of Wall Street to bring attention to the global consciousness that we want a change in the United States. And it's not the change that President Obama talked about during his campaign. This is a change of the real, a real redistribution of wealth. It is to get us to a system where we're all equal. We all have health care. We all have enough to eat. We all have education so that we can act in an intelligent way to solve our problems such as global warming. Now, what is happening on Wall Street is they have an encampment they're occupying it until they feel that their demands are met and that we get beyond this class warfare that we are now seeing in the United States. Now, I was reading about this bull. You see that bronze sculpture outside of Wall Street. It has become like a tourist attraction. And the police have barricaded it because that is the symbol of American capitalism. The bull represents the aggressive nature of the markets. Cut down the rainforest is their cry. So you can make profits. Mine all the coal from the mountaintops to make profits. This is the kind of market system that is insane and it needs to be castrated. And that bull has some big underpintings, uh, testicles, 
And all I could think about when I saw that bull underneath is we need to get a blowtorch and just cut off the reproductive organs of that bull. So then I went to Flickr today getting this uh, slideshow together and I saw Godzilla. So let's take a look at this image here. Look at, this is a brilliant image. There you see the, the, the lights of the city at night all being run through coal, um, nukes, mostly non-renewable energies. And there is the monster, this electric monster. Godzilla was a movie that was created in 1959. And it represented to the Japanese what happened to them during the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This monster emerged, something uncontrollable. And the remake of Godzilla is that it was a mutation that happened that made these monsters grow in New York City. So Godzilla is with us. Some of us can see it and some of us cannot. Okay, let me get out of this. And what the Godzilla does is it is it, uh, it, it gives off nuclear radiation. Now this is an important image because we need to know what we are struggling against. And it is on the microscopic level. In what this area you can see the radiated cells. These are nuclear particles here. And this will give cancer and mutations. This is what the normal cell. So that's not good. This is what we're doing to ourselves, making ourselves unhealthy with this, these forms of energy that are non-renewable. Now in Tucson, most of our energy comes from coal. I called up the Tucson Electric Company to ask them, where does our coal come from? Is it coming from the Appalachian Mountains? Are you responsible for uh, mountaintop removal? Is that where my energy is coming from? Well, they wouldn't tell me where it's coming from. I am assuming it's coming from maybe Arizona, from the Peabody uh, Coal Company, which is just as bad. But here are some images of the coal situation in Arizona. This is Tucson where we get our electricity. And this is the monster. This is the monster that we are having to deal with now. And this is why in a state where we could use solar energy. It's insane. We've got to make the transition. It's a quantum leap in understanding. It's a consciousness shift. It's a new energy regime. It's, it is uh, overthrowing the old energy regime, which has been called King Kong, coal, oil, gas, and changing it to renewables, wind power, uh, geothermic, uh, and letting our imagination go so that we can figure out new inventive ways to capture electricity. Now, the results of uh, not using renewables is that we are going past the breaking point for the planet. We are releasing so much CO2 into the atmosphere, the carbon, that we're changing the climate. And there are so many scientists that are saying, yes, this has actually happened. There are still these other scientists 
who work for the uh, nuclear and coal industry and natural gas industry. And they are saying, oh no, it's not. It's, it's some other geological reason why the planet seems to be warming up and our climate is going into extreme uh, patterns. But the majority of us realize this is not the case. So here's Mary DeCamp, and she is speaking at a rally today at the University of Arizona about this 350.org. And it, I rode my bike there. It felt really good to do that. And um, uh, this is all connected with the Wall Street problem because it's this money and this abstract mathematic tyranny that we are living in over money, private money, the greed of some people for power and control. Now, this is what we have got to do, is to stop being greedy. Americans are particularly greedy and that we consume most of the energy of the world but and we are destroying most of the because of that the the mountains and the forest and everything that goes into the production of the non-renewables so we are guilty and let's just face up to it we are guilty. We are destroying the world with our lifestyle, this false American dream. Who wants it? It doesn't work. The uh, people, some progressives are saying, oh, no, we want the American dream. We want the middle class back. But the middle class doesn't work. It never worked. The nuclear family has never worked. So here's some recycling. Uh, and what I realized was at this protest was it's just not enough. There weren't enough people there. There weren't enough students. Where were the students? Well, that became obvious because today there was a football game. And so they were, they were going to go to the football game. So what needs to happen? is that we need to take the protest to the stadium. We need to get those banners and hold them up during football games. Listen to me. Let's do it. You know, give me, contact me. You want to be part of a protest in the stadium? Let's do it. Now, at this uh, event, I got to at least somebody was listening to me. I talked to this guy. He said, well, what do you think about global warming? I said, yeah, we got to create our colleges, car-free cities. And that is exactly my mission here, is to help us understand that we have to move into entirely new 21st century cities. Now, they're doing this in places like China, they are innovating new cities. They're using sustainable techniques to create these zero carbon cities. Now we need to do that in the United States and I suggest we do it in Arizona. More images from this demonstration. Teachers teaching gardening. Very good. Every school should be having permaculture designs. Uh, forget the lawns, you know, get rid of them and start doing agriculture. Feed us live food. These children need it. And Bill McGibbon, he is one of the leaders of the 350.org. And as I talked about last time, uh, there was a demonstration where thousand, I think like 1,200 people were arrested, the largest uh, arrest 
in the environmental movement since the 70s. So thank you, Bill. Yes, let's continue the civil disobedience because that is really what, where our security lives. Now, they had a table for Habitat for Humanity. And it talked about this, uh, you know, standard habitat housing uh, has three bedrooms and it has 1,200 square feet and all this. This is the wrong direction. How dare they build these kind of houses? I know they're helping the poor and people that don't have shelter, but it is the wrong direction to go in. Here is their table. So please, Habitat for Humanity people, let's try something new. Let's try the, um, the evolution of the city. There's the house, there's the icon that my doctorate was uh, that this is an icon that is causing our problem. We have the king of the castle, you know, the patriarchy. It's car dependent. Uh, so we need to move into a collective housing where we have both personal and public space. This is a collective consciousness, you know, so this would be like an arcology for one million people. We can really do away with homelessness if we do that rather than just build these individual houses. And this is an arcology. So let's move the model, please let's move the model. And this is car free. And this is for the new universal human. We get out of the ecocentric self and we move to being for humanity, cosmic individuals who are so connected with the cosmos that they can see a future. They can see the stars. So back to the 350.org, these are the raging grannies. Now, raging grannies, let's really rage. We gotta be outrageous. I wanted more rage at this thing. You know, what is happening at Wall Street with them uh, having this occupation uh, that's where we need to go. You know, this is just like sitting around. This is sitting around and it's not really communicating with each other. What are our, how do we change society? How do we change society? And this is Ron Proctor in the background there and he was the MC for this event. There is somebody that was speaking for Gabriel Cousins about solar energy. But Ron, let's have an open mic. I was there, Dave Ewalt was there. We want, you know, these are people that should be speaking to our problem. But the mic is so closed and so controlled that there isn't time for democracy, for new voices, for voices that just get inspired at the moment. Now that's when we know that we have a love illusion, is when we have open mics that allow the spirit to arise and the information to be channeled to the people. And there's Mary again. She uh, did not set up a table. Her, she's running for mayor and she rode a um, motorcycle so she couldn't bring her table. And there is Jonathan Rothschild, who I invited to be on this show with Mary. I thought that Perhaps they could debate the issues, but it did not work out maybe next time. But gosh, we just need a mayor who can change Tucson to be green, to have the buses run by green energy and to have the buses so it's a good system and that everyone wants it like they did in Cordichiba. Brazil, which I got the chance to visit, and like, I don't know, more than uh, maybe 40% of the people took buses, public buses. And there is their banner that I think belongs at the football stadium. And we had the puppets. We had the puppets that were showing us smog. I don't know how many of you uh, walk up to Mamak Hill. Well, I do. Uh, try to do it several times a week. And there are many days when I can see the smog hanging over 
Tucson, all of those people with asthma are being affected by this bad air. All of us are being affected. And I wonder to myself when I see that, that smog, can politicians see the smog? Are they seeing what I'm seeing? Or do they not see it? Because if they really saw it, wouldn't they stop the smog? And here is somebody who, uh, Jordan, who was singing today. And he starts singing about something that I was present for. And this was uh, a, a man in Amherst, Massachusetts at the beginning of the first Gulf War. He set himself on fire. He uh, did this Buddhist thing in the middle of the square. I wasn't there for the actual burning, but I was there because I lived in Amherst and it greatly affected the whole community. And it affected him to sing a song about it. So that was really inspiring to me uh, that he did that. So now another issue about the Glocks in Tucson. Uh, I went to a, a street protest about the Glocks and how they were raffling off this gun. Of course, it was in completely bad taste and we need gun control. We need it because there are too many young people, they get a hold of these guns, and they start shooting each other. And they see it on TV. They see it everywhere. So here's my friend Joyce, and she's got this wonderful uh, uh, sign about what happened January 8th. And the man next to her, Eric, he was actually shot during January 8th, and he showed me the bullet holes in his leg. So we need to get beyond this very violent culture and the way we can do it is to create the arcology on Arizona State Trust land. Now I want to say over and over again that this is a change so fundamental because it goes to the cell of capitalism and that cell is private property is building houses on plots of land that were uh, create separate houses so we have no sense of community there are no community centers in which people can gather to talk about what they need, to have community relationships, to be political. They have taken away our rights to be political. We live in these private houses uh, connected to the internet or however we are getting information uh, through television. And this has been our lives. We don't have any face-to-face communication anymore. So the love element is eliminated. So that's why this is a love illusion, because we need to come together to express our love, to express our art, to be able to uh, know who each other are. And we have to take back our a freedom of assembly. I have right here the American Constitution, and in it, it says, when you are in a tyranny, it is your duty and right to revolt. So I'm asking all of you who can hear my message to revolt, you know, to take up what the Constitution says when you're in a tyranny to overthrow it. And that's what we need to do. That's the only thing we need to do. And to set up a planetary system. This is great times. It's a great time when we're becoming a planetary citizen. And we need the, the uh, formation of how to do this. So I wanna thank everybody for listening to my show. 
and uh, don't know if I'm still on, but it looks like I am. So I will uh, say to you, uh, I'll be at Solar Culture tonight if you can come tap me on the back and tell me what you think about creating a revolution, evolution, love-olution. <laughs>